play before, you've seen Wisconsin before, and you've seen Kansas State potentially before. Yeah, no, it's uh, a lot of familiarity with, uh, uh, you know, it was 2013, we were 12, and, and uh, went to San Jose, so uh, hope the results are close to the same. So, um, you know, it's Wisconsin's a lot of tradition, uh, you know, very good basketball program. We've played them twice, uh, as you mentioned, uh, and lost a couple close games to them. So one in Milwaukee and one in Omaha. So uh, be interesting to see, you know, how we bounce back from four days and uh, have a light day tomorrow and a couple tough days Tuesday, Wednesday, getting ready and hopefully be ready on Friday. It being Friday, you appreciate that about the draw, maybe the most, just having an extra day to... You know, I am happy about that. Uh, you know, we just played four, you know, games, and if we played on Thursday, we'd be traveling on Tuesday already. Uh, so, and it is finals week, so we've got a lot of things to take care of here this week. Uh, so, you know, for all things considered, uh, the four games we just played, um, finals, you know, and just a little time to travel, you know, I, I think it is good for us. Being a, it's in the Bay Area, any hope of kind of having a home crowd advantage to, to your corner? You know, when we were there in uh, 13, we had, you know, pretty good support, you know. So uh, hopefully, you know, it's close enough. It is Friday, so that I think helps a little bit. You know, people maybe can get to the game. But, uh, you know, we had great support in Vegas, I thought. You know, I thought uh, as week went on and people got down there, uh, you know, it was great. And Dylan was there and flew back to Memphis for treatment and then flew back for the finals. So we had Dylan Brooks there helping us. So, no, I, I thought support was great in Vegas, and uh, it really helped us. And, and we look for, you know, some support in San Jose. You have the... Is that on? I just, I even Hello? Hello? <laughs> I, I think it's on. <laughs> so... When this thing started to turn, it was two games in a weekend and four in a weekend. Is eight now a sample size where you can kind of think this is kind of who we are, who we become, or do you still look at kind of what was going on early on and say, uh-oh, we could still flip back well, to that? Well, you know, eight, eight's a lot, you know, better track record, you know. Uh, we did it at home. We did it twice on the road, and now we've done it four times on a neutral floor. So, no, I, I think the guys, you know, guys are playing better and more confidence and, you know, a lot more energy focused in the right direction. So, uh, no, I, I'm excited. You know, I, I hope our team is. You know, we know it's a tough little four-team bracket there. You know, we scrimmage Kansas State, so we know how good they are. And Wisconsin, as I mentioned, traditional power. And don't know much about Irvine because we didn't play them this year, but we've played Russ's teams in the past, and they're always very physical, very tough. So, um, be – Real tough four-team tournament for us. Danny, you mentioned last night a bit about just how big a shift this was over three or four weeks for you guys. Can you compare from your perspective, as the players, this would have been the tournament before, but you've been in a position before where you, you knew you were going to be in the NCAA tournament regardless of the conference tournament. I think this is one of the first instances for you of having to win four games in four days to put yourself in that position. Just what has this journey been like from your perspective as a coach? Because three or four weeks ago, this was most definitely not possible other than doing what you just accomplished? Well, it was, um, you know, I, I guess a, a tiring four days, you know, for everybody. You know, we, because uh, we had those late games, you know, and, and so <laughs> we get back to the hotel close to midnight, you know, and you eat and shower and everybody's tired, you know, and, and uh, we let them sleep in and get up and eat a real late breakfast and you're not eating pregame till, 4.30, you know, 4 o'clock, and everything, you know, your, your routine has just moved back so far. So you go 8.30, 8.30, 8.30, and uh, then 7.30. Uh, so, you know, I just felt tired all the time, you know, and I think the guys, you know, we were always trying to, come on, guys, and get your rest, and uh, uh, because it, it was four days, and we haven't been used to that. You know, the other tournaments, and they've all been three days, you know, which uh, tired us out enough. But uh, this was a four-day, you know, so it was a little different. It was a little different. And, 
you know, I was, I was really pleased. I mean, I thought we played with a lot of energy last night. You know, Peyton in particular, who had played the most minutes. I mean, he, he bounced around like that was his first game. You know, so proud of his dunk and everything. So, uh, you know, it. Uh, I, I just thought her energy level was was really good last night, and um, except for the turnovers in the first half, and we, we really blew a couple defensive assignments there and gave up some easy baskets. But other than that, you know, I, I thought we played good. We we hit free throws. We cut our turnovers down the second half. Um, so I, I thought we did a lot of good things. As you prepare for Wisconsin. How much does it help to have a couple of common opponents? Obviously, when you played Iowa, you still had bowl, but you do have Stanford as a common opponent as well. Are those the most relevant games, or do you look mainly at the I don't. I don't think or? so. I, you know, we'll look at the last few games they've played, you know, because uh, we're a lot different team than those, you know, than we played in Iowa. Heck, I can't. That seems like it's been ten months ago rather than a few months ago, you know. So, you know, I don't, I don't think those games. Uh, We'll look at their last set of games, you know, their, their conference games, uh, the last few conference games, their tournament games, and, and go from there. Um, you know, because we're a lot different team now than we were, you know, obviously a month ago. So I'm sure they're going to look at our last eight games, and we'll probably look at their last seven or eight. It seemed like majority of last year and then the early part of this season, you talked a lot about the team not seeming to buy into what you guys were coaching them. When do you feel like that switch was made and when did it become like this was more of an opportunity than just a home? Well, you know, I, I'm not sure I ever used those terms. Um, you know, it, it's just getting everybody connected, everybody on the same page. Um, uh, you know, at, at different times, guys, you know, uh, really are all in. You know, at other times, things aren't going well for them. It's how they face <clears throat> adversity, you know, and, and – uh, you know, when things aren't going good for them, you know, how they respond. You know, that's part of human nature. It's part of any team. Um, you know, and, and fortunately for us, during this little run here, you know, everybody's responded very well, you know, regardless of how it's going for them. You, if you watched our bench last night, uh, you know, I, I tightened it up the last, you know, second half there just because we had a run going. And... You know, guys, they were they were they were good with it. We were winning, you know, and and so, um, you know, I I really, you know, appreciate the way the guys have responded here late, knowing that we needed to change some things, you know, knowing that we need to get more focused, more together, communicate a lot better. Um, you know, the guys really did a great job making some adjustments, and uh, you know, we are playing our best ball, and and hopefully, you know, that'll continue. Kind of along those same lines, earlier in the season you talked a lot about how this team was not really on the same page defensively. And then obviously the last stretch, it's been kind of your calling card. Was there a point in time where conceptually it, they just started to grasp it? Or was it just kind of, it, it just took time and experience to, to get all of those pieces in place before it would come together the way it has? You know, a little of both. Um, you know, there a lot of the guys, um, you know, are new and so, you know, our matchup is a little different. You know, we uh, bump different and take cutters differently, and, and we can change it up during the game, and, and that's where the communication, you know, and it just – and watching film through so many of the games, you, you could just tell they weren't talking because we'd have two guys going to make the same play, you know, and leaving somebody wide open. And it, it uh, you know – really made for us giving up some uncontested shots, both inside and out. And uh, uncontested shots were killing us. You know, our, our percentage on contested shots is, is very good because of our length and ability to block shots at the rim. You know, we can really run people off the line. And uh, so when we get shots contested, when we're matched up properly, you know, uh, I think contested shots are about 17% on the year, you know. so because of Kenny, because of Francis, because of our length inside and uh, being able to run guys off, you know, if we can get them contested. But we were screwing up so much, you know, having two guys go the same guy and leaving somebody wide open. And you got to talk and you got to anticipate. And uh, whether they didn't pick it up or you know, just didn't want to talk, we, we weren't doing a very good job. And so it has really picked up. You know, when you watch our film, 
you know, we still make some mistakes, but they're not as glaring as they were, you know, and uh, guys are doing a much better job communicating and, you know, taking responsibility. And, and even if they do something wrong, letting everybody know what they're doing so the other guys can respond to it a little bit. And then you got guys like Paul, who's got a lot of experience in the background. You know, he's covering up more mistakes now, you know, because he kind of got a feel for what guys are going to do. And, and he's done a much better job also. Hey coach, you got a pretty unique lineup. You got four guys starting at six nine, and then Peyton, uh, and that's as I correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed to be the lineup that that made this happen. So, could you just kind of go over, explain the thinking there? You got three guards now coming off the bench plus Miles, um, and just how is that working for you? Oh, I don't know. It it wasn't. I just got upset with them at uh, at USC. And Francis was, at that time, by far the most team guy we had, the most unselfish, the most guy that was all about the team. And just said, he's starting. I don't know who else is starting, but he's going. And so then after I backed myself into a corner, then we just had to go with it, you know. So, um, you know, and, and he, his energy, you know, and uh, – unselfishness is, is really helped our team. You know, I mean, he, he, you know, always the first guy to help somebody out, never pouts, you know, I take him out there. He, boy, he, okay, coach, what I got to do next? You know, I mean, he just, uh, unselfish, you know, all about the team. And, and that, you know, is what we, you know, really need. And, and guys, you know, they just, they had to give up something of themselves so that, you know, the team would be better. You know, and they all have this picture of what they need to do. And sometimes that doesn't meet the, the picture of what the team needs done. And, uh, uh, you know, at that point, you know, guys start thinking about, okay, you know, I, let, let's worry more about what the team needs. And, you know, and that's really helped us. And Francis is, is a big part of that. Uh, his energy and, like I said, his unselfishness. And, you know, the guys love him. They know, you know, how hard he plays. They know he's all about the team. And. And so he's made a tremendous difference. Lou's ankle come through fine. Yeah, time. yeah. I, I saw him in the training room earlier today, and uh, he was getting treatment on it. But, uh, you know, uh, didn't look too bad. I, I probably rest it uh, today and tomorrow, and, and Tuesday he should be ready to practice. But I, I think he'll be fine. Dan, just making the tournament was obviously a, a big hill to climb, but do you get the sense that guys aren't just happy to be there, that they want to make something of it, and is that kind of your message to them? Absolutely. Um, good book, pleased but not satisfied. Uh, a good friend of mine wrote that. Pleased with what we've accomplished, but by no means are we satisfied. And uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, our guys, they know that they had a good week, and they've had a couple good weeks here. But uh, I don't think they're satisfied. I know the coaching staff's not. We've, we've underachieved this year. The only way to, to make that up is to have a great run here. And uh, so I don't think there's anybody you know, satisfied with what we've accomplished. Uh, I am happy with the guys, I, you know, uh, tremendously so. You know, I, that was a great four-day effort. And the camaraderie and the way those guys, you know, played together. Um, it was fun to see. And the comeback against Arizona State, uh, you know, we wouldn't have made a month ago, you know, uh, down nine, ten minutes to go. And, you know, I think we're down five with four or five minutes to go. We, you know, we, I don't think we'd have made that. You know, we wouldn't have got the stops. We wouldn't have got the rebounds. Uh, senior stepped up and hit a couple big shots. So, um, really happy for the guys because, you know, they've really, really taken some steps here lately. What do you make of Peyton's play, ball handling? I think he had just four turnovers in the tournament in about 150 minutes. That's yeah, he, he did a great job. 22 assists, four turnovers. Um, defensively, his steals um, gave us great energy, great leadership. Um, he really played well. There, there's absolutely um, no doubt, he, you know, he sparked us. Lou gave us great minutes. Paul, Ehab off the bench, uh, Francis, and then Kenny's blocks last night. Everybody made a contribution, but, uh, you know, Peyton really kept us together and made big play after big play and, and really did a good job. 
Just uh, curious uh, if you know Greg Gard. He was such a long-time assistant of Bo Ryan. Uh, I imagine he's probably kept a lot of Bo's tenants. What do you remember about uh, the teams Bo had in playing against him? Yeah, he was, he was with Bo. He's he's really good coach, really good guy. Um, I don't know him all that well, but obviously we see each other on the road uh, quite a bit. And, uh, um, you know, those are two really good games. Uh, the one in Milwaukee, you know, we had a good halftime lead and, and they got a little roll going that first four minutes and I didn't take a timeout. I was waiting for the damn TV timeout and uh, and I should have taken one. And got let the crowd get into the game and uh, and then we went back and forth. Uh, the rest of the night and uh, lost it at the end. Uh, the game in Omaha, uh, I think it was a tie ball game with, with about four minutes to go, and, and we weren't able to hold on down the stretch. So uh, Joe, you know, really was good. We beat Oklahoma State in the first round and and um, played, a, played a good game. Remember tying it up there late, and then I think Decker hit a big shot for him. So uh, we had two good games, both of them in the round of 32. Uh, just came up short uh, on both of them, and uh, I guess we're hoping third time's charm. Thanks, Coach. All righty.